For Ottawa Tonight, I'm Bob LeDrew. I am here with the lovely and talented Meredith Luce at the Ottawa Folklore Centre. Meredith Luce is not only a singer-songwriter, not only a graphic designer, but also the designer of some really cool workshops this year at the Ottawa Folk Festival. Meredith, tell us everything. Well, everything. There's so much to tell. Okay, um, tell us part of everything. Part of everything. Uh, the Ottawa Folklore Centre has decided to, uh, to revamp its workshop series and we've we're offering a lot of free instruments to people who sign up early. Um, basically, there's going to be everything from nose flutes to jaw harps to ukuleles, folky madness, everywhere you look at the folk festival, obviously. So. Where did you, where, where did this idea come up? Because the Folklore Center and the folk festival have been associated for a long time. So, tell me a little bit about the, the genesis of the idea. Well, basically, in the past years, the Ottawa Folklore Center has had educational workshops. Um, it was our plan this year, though, to create it under the umbrella of uh, a complete workshop series called the Pass It Down Workshop Series. We've also started a new element, which is pre-registration for these workshops. Um, people can go online now to ofcmusic.ca and sign up early. Um, our 15 to 20 earliest registrants for certain workshops are going to be the recipients of, of free instruments. Um, we were able to get some additional sponsorship. Um, we wanted to really make it possible for anyone to have an instrument and learn an instrument and uh, just make it as accessible as we could. So there's going to be free ukuleles, free tin whistles, harmonicas, jaw harps, and cool. nose flutes. So. Free larvae guitars? Oh, we'll work on that for next okay. year maybe. <laughs> right. Maybe just one. So, uh, and we've got a couple of the workshop presenters with us, and maybe we'll start with the big cheese, the, the president of the Ottawa Folklore Centre, Arthur McGregor. For those who are not familiar with what the jaw harp is, sh show, us, show us what a jaw harp looks like. Well, the neat thing is that both instruments that I'm teaching fit in my pocket, but some of them are hard to get out. They don't actually fit out of your pocket. <laughs> That's right, there we go. There is a jaw harp. Now, <clears throat> uh, there's an ongoing uh, discussion on, uh, they're often traditionally known as Jews harps, uh, or juice harps, or jaw harps, or guim or there's a million names for them. <clears throat> I call them jaw harps because they actually use your jaw to, to move the, uh, the, the sound around your mouth. And if they get too juicy, then they rust, which Yeah, they is might be called pleasant. dental assistants, because uh, <laughs> you, know, you play them wrong and you go to your dentist. And... What, what can you do? with a jaw harp? Well, it is an unusual instrument in that there's only one note, but that note can be resonated and, and the overtones can be brought out in your mouth and you can get something like... And all kinds of stuff. So, tell, tell me a little bit about who's used this instrument in, uh, in, in recorded music. Well, I don't know in recorder. I mean, there, there are definitely recordings around. It's, it's not the kind of thing that people, you know, say, I was a jaw harp recorder on Pink Floyd, you know. <laughs> uh, it's not the kind of thing you often see. However, the interesting thing is that I just did a jaw harp demonstration for the Museum of Civilization in their 100 years of fur trade, and, and uh, the guimbat was a very popular instrument in the fur trade to the native people. So oh. a lot of early uh, native settlements, you see some bones and rattles and jaw harps. Cool. Yeah. No, now we're going from metal to plastic, I think. To plastic, to an instrument that is actually misnamed as a nose flute, but since it is a flute that you stick on your nose, it, it, it does seem to be that, apropos. Now, now this looks like something that Hannibal Lecter would be wearing. Well, you know, absolutely, it, it, it looks that way indeed. <laughs> but if Hannibal Lecter wore this, there wouldn't be a movie. <laughs> <laughs> True enough, yes. So. What, what, what's the principle behind this? How well, what this, this does, you put this up against your face, come so, and you blow through your nose, and the nose forces, or, or pardon me, the, the instrument forces the air across your mouth, much like blowing across a pop bottle, but you can change the shape of your mouth and get a glissando type effect. Somebody uh, equated this to a slide whistle without the slide. You're using your mouth as a slide. So you are aware you're doing this in allergy season. This, this is going to get there, messy. There are limitations you on every share instrument. <laughs> Well, Keep your nose flute to yourself. Yeah, you can have it's... hard fingers or something for guitar players. Well, you can have, <laughs> you know, for this. And this is what they sound like. They're very interesting. Nice. Humanitone blues. I Humanitone believe. blues. We'll, we'll this is it. also the instrument I believe used for... <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. 
Seriously? Really? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like that, though. That's I good. Do. It sounds good. believable. It, it, who did that music? Like, Sergio Leone? Sergio Leone. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I don't think he used a nose flute. Possibly a real not. nose flute is actually a bamboo instrument that sticks out of your nose, and you, you plug one nostril and you blow through your nose. And it's a Hawaiian traditional instrument. Yeah. So this is actually called a humanitone. It was invented as somewhat of a, a toy instrument back uh, just turn of the, the 20th century. By Mr. Arthur, Human. you are not only a humanitarian, but you are a humanitonist. Nicer words have never been spoken. Thank you so much. And You're we've welcome. also got uh, Ross Davison, Come who teaches over. here at the Ottawa Folklore yeah. Center. And uh, Ross, you are a penny whistleist. Yes. So tell me about the penny whistle. Um, penny whistle, also named tin whistle. Uh, I've also heard other names like feed dog and things like that from the Gaelic. Um, really, really simple instrument. In my mind, it's the, uh, in terms of construction, I should say, in my mind, the ultimate wind folk instrument. Why? Um, <laughs> <laughs> There's a dissenting voice from the humanitone section. Uh, we'll settle this off camera. Um, <laughs> first of all, you can get a major diatonic scale, uh, which is just fancy music lingo for, you can play along with most other instruments pretty easily, and you get two octaves out of it. So it has a pretty nice big range, you can accompany most vocalists, you can play along with the guitar pretty well, and it fits in a lot of different styles of music really easily. And it fits in your pocket. Yes. A little bit more noticeably. Though. Yes, that is sort of revenge of the nerd <laughs> version of the penny whistleist. So, uh, what can people learn in the space of a workshop on penny whistle? If someone sure. walks in, has never played one before, mm -hmm. uh, but has listened to, you know, they may have listened to the Baron McNeils, mm -hmm. they may have listened to the Rankin family or whoever, and said, I want to learn something. So, what can you teach them in the course of a fairly short workshop? Well, first thing, proper hold, it does not go in the nose, like the other flute. Um, we're going to put it in our face, uh, left hand on top, right hand on bottom. First thing we're going to talk about is how to get notes out of it. Uh, it is a whistle, but we want to use really, really gentle breath. If we really give her, it's going to make this huge high-pitched sound and all the dogs in the neighborhood are going to come running. So just nice, gentle breath. I'm not going to ruin the surprise. At the workshop, you learn all the notes and all the note names and all the proper fingerings, and we'll probably get you through a tune or two. So. Cool. And all of that for the sake of one hour, and then you can go off to the designated jam areas yep. and uh, party down mm -hmm. with some heavy wood all night. Yes. <laughs> cool. Thanks very much, Ross. Thank you. That is it from here for the Ottawa Folklore Center. Uh, if you're interested in registering for these workshops, uh, you can go online to ofcmusic.ca uh, and pre-register. You can also register on-site for the workshops, and there are a limited number of instruments available. So uh, if you've been dying for that uh, perfect birthday gift, like the Humanitone, and this is your opportunity to get one for free, uh, we'll see you there.